Welcome to the Andy Noise Experience, the podcast of endurance noise and random musings. It's uh, Saturday, August 29th, 2020, about 9 o'clock here in Bakersfield, California. We had pretty nice weather today. Got in some miles this morning, did a pool workout, and now I'm going to do a little bit of endurance noise daily. Um, Thunder Ultra is posted uh, recently. I did an interview with Craig Simmons, who's the race director for that race up in Northern California. His race is going to be held on 9-19-2020. They've got all the permits and everything's ready to go. It's on a private property, so they should be able to hold it. And, uh, you know, we're definitely going to do all the social distancing and keep everybody safe. Mike Melton is the timer. He's a really great timer. If you'd like to save some money on it, you can save 10% by using Noise 10 at checkout. And uh, you just type in Ultra Sign Up and look under Thunder Ultras. There's links in the show notes on the podcast and, and on the uh, my YouTube channel. I always put in usually antinoise.com and you can click on there. And I often do these show notes on the podcast. So if you go on blog, like today is 29 August, 2020. So that will be a race. Speaking of performances, a couple week a week or two ago, uh, Harvey Lewis broke um, Marshall Ulrich's record for the fat FKT from Badwater to the top of Mount Whitney. Well, um, uh, Marshall did his 30th uh, completion uh, in 30 years. He just got done with it the other day, and it says, he did it, Marshall Oreck. Just call me from the summit of Mount Whitney. Finish time and photos to come. He's completed his 30th crossing on foot 30 years after his first crossing in 1990. He did it by completing the short course, 135 miles from the Badwater Basin to Whitney Portals yesterday, made possible by cruise support. And then today, completing 11 miles up to the 14,500-foot summit of Whitney, thus in order of Al Arnold and so many others who came before him, completing 146 miles from the lowest to the highest points in the continental United States. Dr. Bob was with him. His first call was always and forever the fellow stray dog, Mark Macy. And, of course, Dr. Bob and Mark Macy, you probably, if you've been watching Eco Challenge on Amazon Prime, you definitely saw them on there. And he also says thanks to Ben Jones, Denise Williams, and so many others that supported Marshall along the way. At 30 years, wow, truly amazing and uh, good for them. Speaking of some racing that's just kind of, you know, so many races are getting canceled. The EMU six-day race, um, they just found out that they're gonna. There's new travel restrictions in Hungary, so no, for, no foreigners are gonna be allowed into Hungary, and um, that's starting on September 1st. So it's looking as though that only people will be doing the race are people from the uh, area. So. That's unfortunate. Here in the United States, on uh, Running Against Time Facebook page, an athlete posted Tim Mulliken roast. He said he received an email from the race director of the American Heroes Run, 12-hour, 24-hour, 100-mile in Longmont, California. That is, that's the race is on the weekend of September 11th. Um, health authorities have told them that runners must wear face coverings at all times in the race. So that's interesting. I posted a, I reposted something on Instagram showing a cross-country meet in the Midwest and. All the athletes were running with face covering, so it can be done. Um, we'll see what's going on with that. Um, everybody's just trying to figure stuff out. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, another race that we've got going on, a virtual race, it's called the IAU Six Hour Virtual Global Sol Solidarity Run, and it's going on right now. And it's a six hour run. And uh, I've got lots of great runners. Uh, men's team is Cole Crosby, Kalen Kahn, David Kilgore, John Olson, Sam Skeels, and Michael Wardian. Um, 426 runners representing 33 women's national teams and 34 men's national teams. And uh, <clears throat> there's going to be some coverage on the uh, internets. Uh, another race that I've done many times and unfortunately is not going to happen this year. I, I was a legacy at Beyond Limits. It was where I did my first 24 hour race seven years ago or so. I've done the 24 hour there. I did like, um, uh, then I've done the 100 mile race. I won the 48. And this year I hadn't signed up because I got injured, as anybody who listens to podcasts. And then, of course, it got moved from its usual March date to September. And they just uh, sent out an email to people that says, Last night, we were informed of the 2020 Bit Beyond Limits reg runners that the postponed multi-day blue set for uh, September 18th to 20th has been canceled due to California's COVID rules. A multi-day event like blue cannot legally happen at this time. All runners, runners, or all runners are receiving 100% referral to either blue 2021 or blue 2022. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, additionally, in the effort to show support for the nonprofit Pathway Ranch and to give registered 2020 runners 
chance to experience and compete in a live race this year. They are going to have a free marathon 50K on October 17th or 18th for those of people, and they're gonna do uh, wave starts and keep the race slow. Um, Blue has raised over $120,000 over the last eight years for this nonprofit Pathfinder Ranch, an educational retreat for kids. And I highly recommend doing that race sometime. I've always really enjoyed it. And um, I'm sad to see that they're not going to happen. Uh, another race that of interest here, this race, um, Wildcat Hunt Ultra. I had to click on their link. They're in Florida and they're putting on a 100 mile race. And they said, and you got to see these ribbons, they're going to have says, after several discussions with Timing Guy and other race directors, this year's race will have wristbands in the best attempt to keep the natural heartwarming content contact of an ultra event while representing respecting people's feelings with regards to COVID. There will be the following color coding. This is just, wow. <laughs> Red, you would like as much as possible for people to remain six feet away and would like hands-free delivery of aid station supplies. That just should be how it works. Yellow, you're okay with high fives and are okay with volunteers holding your bottles, hydration vests, bladders for refilling, but would like hands-free delivery of food items at the aid station. And green, you're okay with hugs and volunteers having full contact with aid station supplies. And the wristbands are going to be at the pack of pickup. I posted this, reposted it on Facebook. It's already been getting some comments. People were kind of like thinking, what on earth are they thinking? But then again, it's Florida. <laughs> they often cruel and, and Joe Rogan often joke that it's, oh, it must be Florida or Germany. No offense if you live in Florida or Germany, but some crazy stuff goes on. But this just is nuts. I mean, I we and the gesture talked about how the one silver lining of COVID is maybe the aid stations and crews and things like that will get changed. And especially like aid stations, I would love to have just the individual packets. You know, we were talking about, you know, you grab your hand in there and grab M&Ms out of something or this, that, and everything else. And Ed's been doing races and he says, yeah, they've been handing me like a packet of an M&Ms or, you know, fun size candies and stuff like that. And I think that's just the way to go. And, you know, it is unfortunate, it slows you down a little bit if you want to get your bottles filled, um, I guess, but, you know, you could just have lots of bottles filled up. That's what the gesture does. And of course I drink my infamously, I drink my Diet Dr. Pepper, so I always got have cold ones. So I don't really use aid stations very much. I occasionally I'll see something I want to eat, but yeah, that's uh, very interesting. On to some little better news, there was a race. United States Track and Field had the One Mile Road Championships. And um, the race was in Iowa, and Sam Prackle moved from first, fifth, first, fifth to first in the last 400 meters to win the men's race in 358.24. It's the fastest road mile in Iowa history. And the woman's winner, who also won in 2018, Emily LaPari, wins again in 429.3. Excellent times. Good to see that they had some races going on there. Um, then some Twitter stuff. Uh, Steve Magnus, the best performers are not consistently great, but they are great at being consistent. And, you know, that goes with my whole thing. Stay healthy, be boring, not epic. That's the part. You want to get good at something, you just got to be boring. Just do it over and over and over. You know, that 10,000 hours rule and the good things will come. Um, I really enjoy these uh, back in the history type things. Nermi, 1984, 1984, 1924. Pablo Nermi, great Finnish runner, um, has a tweet, Twitter account, <laughs> uh, the person that it is, and it says, in 1937, in London, the mighty Adam, who wore glasses, Sidney Wonderson, ran a 406.4 mile to set the world record. He took four tenths off Glenn Cunningham's record from 1934. The record held for three years, and then, of course, his record lasted until Gunnar Hogg took two tenths off in 1942. Wow, he did that during World War World War II, and I can't talk today. And then, of course, uh, Hal Hingen, great coach, great author. He does. He's talking about how to do a long run, which is tomorrow Sunday. Traditionally, long runs for a lot of you out there. And he says, consider three one. Do the first three fourths of a long run at a comfortable pace. Say the first twelve miles of a sixteen mile. Once in the final fourth of the workout, pick up the pace and finish faster than you start. Not a flat out sprint. Just shift gears into an up-tempo, learn to finish fast. And that's what the Kenyans do. Everyone who goes runs with them says they go out so slow, and then they slowly warm up, and then they push the last um, quarter of the workout. And that's what I do every morning. I've been doing this for years. I usually walk my first half of my workout with Blanca. Then, the you know, every race is a mile. So the first two laps with her, third lap, I kind of chill. And on the fourth lap, I kind of push it. So if I have a 90-minute workout, I do 45 minutes with her, 
15 minutes just kind of get settled in and then the last 15 minutes I try and push the pace and lastly to finish up this uh endurance daily noise um rich gonzalez prep cal track sent out a tweet the other day and i've got to find the link to it because i haven't seen him posted yet it says alert this sunday evening episode one of the golden state legends docuseries produced by hd runners in collaboration with prep cal track that chronicles last year's historic championship showdown season between um go uh, great oak and um new newberry park will drop link to come so that should be definitely an interesting to see so unfortunately some news about races getting canceled here left and right um some races trying to figure it out and some races um you know are definitely going to happen and hopefully we'll be able to figure all this out and also um i'm if you want to join me and the gesture probably will be there too we'll be at that thunder ultras um be doing the 100 miler i gotta get 80 miles in the first 24 and then i get another eight hours you get 32 hours total to finish it up he also has a virtual race and you go on their website and use noise 10 and save 10 percent so as always stay healthy be boring not epic <laughs>